The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. The, the light, light of, of God, God surrounds, surrounds us. us. The love the of, of God, God enfolds us. The power of, of God, God protects us. us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And the world is well. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. All is well. Hey guys, welcome to Moving On TV. I've just got back from the stand-up. Oh, there he is, there he is. Oh my God, he's here. Right, let's bring him on. We've got Emmanuel here, and he's gonna do an introduction to his show, Love Versus Ego. Okay, let's get him on. Hello, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? I can now. How are you? Oh, wow. It's good to be wow. here, Lauren. Yay! 
you. It's so good to see you. I haven't seen you for ages. Hang on. Wow. Oh, <laughs> what have you been up to? Wow. Wow. What have it's you been, been up to? Good. Oh, my days. <laughs> wow. I feel like I haven't seen you in a whole year. You know? It feels like that, doesn't it? Last time we did the rap with Boba. <laughs> so um, I was just going to say to people, if you if you don't like water, get yourself a blend jet. It's absolutely incredible, this. It even crushes ice. You just put the ice in it and you put some whatever you want, like pineapples, apricot kernels, everything is in here. And then you've got an amazing smoothie. And you can put water in as well and that way you get hydrated so emmanuel today um i would like you to do an introduction to your show love versus ego because that's what i want the show to be uh for you to come on hopefully for about 20 minutes on a sunday and talk about your concept of love versus ego so how does that feel to you wow i mean it's an honor and a privilege, you know. Wow. You're welcome. It's so good to see you. I mean, we haven't seen I haven't seen you for what since New Year's Eve. Oh my God! Oh my God! The time's just going so quickly. It's already nearly July. Um, it's my oh. birthday next month. Maybe maybe we could do a special on moving on TV for my birthday in August. Yeah. You and every all of us, an encounter special, maybe. I don't know. That would be so cool. So, yes. how long have you got? Just so I can calculate the time, so I know. How long I, can you stay on for? I have a good. I have a good twenty minutes. I would say. How much? Yeah, yeah I have a good twenty minutes. I would say. A good twenty minutes. All right. Well, we better get going then. So I'm going to come off now, and I just want you to talk about love versus the ego and how people can stay out of ego because there's so much going on. You know, I go to a stand up and sometimes I have to walk away because I won't listen to the fear. I'm not interested in the fear. You know, I am to me, that's just more uh, trying to lower our vibration. So I'm going to leave everyone with you now. This is the Emmanuel show, love versus ego. I'm going to leave every I'm going to come off now for 20 minutes and leave you to get on with it. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. So you you are going to tell people now, how do they switch from the ego and from fear into love? All right. And this is for everyone, no matter who you are, what religion you are, what culture you are, as long as you're on this planet, what we're trying to do with moving on TV is to keep the vibration high. I'm learning ballet. Could you believe it? I'm learning ballet. Oh, wow. <laughs> I've decided by this time next year, I'm going to be flying across, dancing like whooshing. Oh, mm -hmm. God, I wiped my hand there. I need a bigger space as well to work in. Anyway, I'm going to leave you to get on with it, Emmanuel, okay? So I'm going off now, all right? So the show is yours. How long would you like me to speak for? Uh, 20 minutes. Yeah. Oh. And you can do you can do it in two sections if you want. So 10 minutes for here and 10 minutes for the Patreons. So whoever wants to see the rest, they have to they have to go on Patreon and they have to pay something to become Patreons. <laughs> because that way, I, I'm bring, I'm, I'm today, I'm going to be interviewing a new host for Moving On TV. I've got an interview with someone, and he's going to get paid from the little bit that's in Patreon. Thanks to you guys putting a little bit into Patreon, I can pay to bring someone, I can pay him a little bit to come on. All right, then. So I'm going to leave it to you, Manuel. All right, I'm coming off now. Good luck. So welcome Thank to you. Love versus Ego with Emmanuel Trangos. Wow, lovely to be here, everyone. Good afternoon. If you're tuning in from a different country, good evening, good morning, where, wherever you're tuning in from. Excuse the background noise as I'm currently 
you know, my destination. And yes, thank you so much, Lauren, for the wonderful opportunity. We're going to talk about love versus ego. It's an important subject, you know. So first of all, I want to ask you the important question, you viewer. What is love? You know, there's a chat below. You can put down your own definition, idea. What is what is this four-letter word we've been describing for so long? You know? And yes, thank you so much, Lauren. For the is it is it this this feeling that everyone keeps describing that it is you know is it a feeling or is it more and that's why you know lauren has invited me here to share what i know you know and uh, i can give you something that will change your life forever if you receive this so so what is love you know it's interesting that the bible describes you know, okay i'm talking about the bible right now which is the book of life. You go there to find out, find out, to find out what, what everything and everything means and comes from. So I'm talking to you from the the, the the book for guidance for life. In there, in the New Testament, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it's talked about love. You see, the Apostle Paul talks about it. And he actually, um, in, in, in Greece, back in the day, during of the New Testament when it was written they spoke Greek heavily uh, all over the earth all over the world just like nowadays they speak English all over the world you know so back then back to the Empire so this that everyone was Greek and you see in in the Greek language unlike the English language there are more words to describe this one word we have in our English language called love you see in England, in English, we only have one word to describe it. Love. That's it. That's it. <laughs> when, you, when you discuss love, you kind of have to like um, uh, gauge what a context of the conversation is to know what they really mean by love. But in the Greek language, it's more elaborate, so you can easily be able to catch what they're talking about. Let me give you an example. In Greek, there's a few words for love. There's phileo, there's agape, you know, there's eros. So, for example, when someone says eros, they're not talking about normal love. They're talking about passionate, romantic love, erotic love. See, that's eros. That's eros, you see. Whereas if they're talking about, for example, phileo, they'd be maybe talking about friendship. You, I phileo is a friend. I don't error that fail my you see. But then when someone says I agape you, that is talking about a different type of love, a need of love. You see, it's talking about unconditional love. Unconditional love. Love irrespective of how you someone treats you. Unconditional love. Now in First Corinthians thirteen, when the Bible talks about, you know, love, it's talking about that type of love, agape. Agape, agape love, unconditional love, God's type of love, and the one that we have as Christians, you see. So, so first of all, that's so beautiful to know that such a love exists. Unconditional love, you know, a lot of you may be thinking, um, who, who in this world loves me? You know, is there anyone who truly cares about me? Because no one has shown me this agape love, this unconditional love. I don't even know what it feels like. You see, the love I know is, is <laughs> you may think the love, the love you know is only surface love, where the person treats you nice, you know, just, uh, just if, if they can get something out of you. But this type, this type of love is different. The person doesn't want anything from you. In fact, they are, it's a selfless love, an unconditional love, where no matter how badly you treat someone, no matter how bad you are, they still love you recklessly, passionately. That's unconditional love. That's the love God has for you. Passionate, reckless, unconditional, you know, unstoppable because God himself is love, you see? So you cannot know God outside of love because God is love, you see? So that's, the, that's why the Bible says, unless a man knows love, oh, I mean, unless a man knows God, he cannot know love because love is of God, you see? And then there's obviously the opposite where so many people go after love and then they forget God. 
they think the purpose of life is just to love everybody, which is beautiful, you know, it's beautiful. They think the purpose of life is to love everybody, but they, they remove God out of the picture, you see? So that in itself, that's not good either, because you can't have true love outside of God. It has to go hand in hand, you see? Huh. Hallelujah. So, so that's how conditional love. That's the type of love God brings to his children. You know, you may have heard a very popular scripture, John 3.16. You know, in the New Testament, in which it says, For God so loved the world. And it's not talking about the earth, it's talking about the world of sinners. You know, God so loved the world of sinners that he gave his only son, which is Jesus Christ, who is God in flesh himself in flesh in a human body to what to die for them so that if they believe in his resurrection they may get eternal life you see but what's the key thing it says God so loved the world of sinners this world of sinners they didn't do anything to deserve this love in fact they were ungodly you know in the Bible it says that Christ died for the ungodly for the ones who were rebelling against him rejecting him you see that's a perfect example of this agape unconditional love that we're talking about the type of love that irrespective of the person's actions attitude and rebellion you still pursue them you still love them but you see the beautiful thing about God is that he's not only loving he is love but for example he's also righteous and just so so he's balanced he's balanced that's why you see a lot of people go to hell, not because God hates them, but because God can't force people to love God. You see? So you either choose love or hate. There's no in-between. There's no middle ground. You see? There's no... It's, it's black or white. It's as simple as that. So, back to the subject. <laughs> this love versus ego. Beautiful way to put it. You see? So we've just been talking about love. What is love? And 1 Corinthians chapter 13 continues to describe what love is. You see, it says love is patient. That, you see, so it tells you love is not a feeling. Love is, is not an emotion. It's, an, it's a choice. It's an action. It's an attitude. You see, it says love is patient. Is patience a feeling? No. Is patience an emotion? Absolutely not. Patience is a choice. You choose to remain patient despite things that would annoy you. You choose. So you see, love is a choice. That's why so many people fall in love. But the love they have is feelings, is emotions. So they fall in love thinking it's true love, but it's not. So eventually those feelings fade away. And a person thinks, oh, I don't love this person anymore. That's not the case. You're not supposed to have this emotion with the person for so long. You're supposed to have agape love, committed love by choice to them. You see, the Bible doesn't say marry who you love the bible says love who you marry the person you married choose to be committed to them and to love them until the day that you guys die you see that's a gap in love committed love irrespective of where you feel um butterflies in your stomach towards them irrespective of if, if this day they're annoying you you're committed and you choose to love them regardless with this attitude of love, which is agape, completely different from emotional love, you see? So that's the kind of love that 1 Corinthians 13 is talking about, the kind of love that God has, you see? So it says love is patient, patient. The first attribute of love is said to be patient. So many people are so impatient, impatient with their partner, impatient with their friends. What, why? Because they lack the choice to love, which is patience. And it's not only patience, it's talking about long-suffering patience, long-suffering love. You see? It says love is patient. Love is what? Kind. There's a difference between kindness and niceness. So many people are nice, but nice is superficial. It hides ulterior motives. Kindness is different. You can be tough yet kind. You see? 
if you're nice, you can never be tough. You're going to be a, 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 a foot sore for people to walk all over you. That's why I'm not nice. I'm kind, yet tough. Glory to Jesus. You see? So, so it says, love is patient. Love is kind. You see? Love is merciful. This, this attitude called love, this choice called love, this commitment, this principle called love, is patience, kindness, mercy. And what, are, what else does it say? It says it forgives easily. So many people hold bitterness in their heart. That's not love. Hold unforgiveness in their heart towards other people. That's not love. The Bible says love forgives easily. Agape forgives easily. It says it does not, a, it does not write a note or a list of the wrongs that someone did to them. Love doesn't do that. Love forgives and forgets. You see, that's what God did. God died for your sins, wiped your sins away, and then he forgot, he chose to forget your sin. He totally abandoned the memory of your sin. You see, so God doesn't hold your sins against you. All you have to do is accept his forgiveness, which is for past, present, and future sin. You see, so that's, that's the, the love that God is talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 in action. He shows you what it is. Yet so many people miss it and do the opposite. <laughs> they think they love, but actually they're being hateful and selfish. You know, bitterness, unforgiveness. When, when the Bible says that love forgives easily, it does not account for the wrongs done to it. You see? And then it continues, love is not boastful. It is not selfishly ambitious. It is not vainglorious. It is not prideful. Pride is also selfishness. And that's the ego bit. With the, the subject for today is love versus ego. You see, that's the ego bit. Ego is if you allow yourself to become prideful, to become haughty, to, be, to think higher of yourself than you ought to think, to blow your, your ego out of proportion. But the, the question is, so many people have this pride in themselves. And, you know, pride blinds you, so you, do, you can't even see that you have it, you see. So, but the question is, how can you even know who you are? Okay, so you remember how I said pride, um, it, it makes you think higher of yourself than you ought to think. But the question is, how are you supposed to think of yourself if you don't even know who you are yet? Some people have lived their whole lives and they're still searching for themselves. They still don't know who they are. You see, they still do not know who they are. I thank, I thank God because I know who I am. And I'm young, I'm 21 years old and I've received the grace and favor from God to know who I am. So that I can share this with you, so that you may find who you are. And you know, so many people search everywhere to find themselves, but never ever get, excuse the background noise please. They never ever get to the place where they know who they are. You see, the Bible talks about there's a way that seems right unto a man, but in the, le in the end it leads in death. You see, you, you may think that life is just about happiness and the goal of pursuing true happiness, but it's not. Because what, what happens when you attain this happiness? So what? You haven't found yourself. You see, so what? Uh, for example, people like Buddha. Buddha said, let us search for the truth together. They were searching for the truth. They never found it. They died on his deathbed. I've heard that Buddha st still said, I, ha I still haven't found the truth, you see. So there's people that are searching for the truth, ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. And there is such thing as objective truth. And you know, nowadays there's people in a postmodernist community saying that there's no such thing as objective truth. Absolute deception and lies. There is objective truth. And it's in the Bible, not on the news. It's in the Bible, not on the news. You see? So, so, so how do you find yourself? How do you find the truth of life, of yourself? You see, I'm telling you, it's only in the place called Christ. It's only once you step into Christ, once you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior into your heart, that you step into this place, this location, this environment called Christ, where you learn who you truly are. Because the only person who can tell you who you are is the one who created you. No one else can tell you who you are. Not yourself, 
not your parents, not a voodoo doctor, not anyone, not a wise man without God. No one can tell, not a feeling, not a miracle, not an emotion. Nothing can tell you and no one can tell you who you truly are apart from the one who created you. You see? That's why you need to connect back to the source, which is God, this person. Not a, so many people think of God as this power, this force, this feeling. No, no, a thousand times no. God is not none of those. God is a person, a person. And I'm not, talk, I'm not talking about um, he's a person with intelligence. He has a mind. He has will. He has emotions. He has thoughts. And that's what the Bible is. The Bible is not a religious book written by man. No, it's inspired totally by God to enwrap his thoughts in vocabulary. So as you study the Bible, you're reading the thoughts of God articulated with vocabulary you can understand how precious this is to be able to know the mind of God the thoughts of God the will the plan the purposes of God that's what the Bible is so through the word of God which is the Bible he reveals to you who you are who you are Romans chapter 10 verse 9 to 10 says in the New Testament, it says, if any man believes that Christ was raised from the dead and confesses that he is Lord of their lives, it says they shall be saved. And in 1 Corinthians, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, if any man be in Christ, this environment called Christ, he is a new creature. He has become who he was meant to be. You see? So, so that's, you find yourself, your true self, who you are in Christ. Outside of Christ, you can never, ever, ever find who you are. Jesus himself said, Jesus, who is God in flesh, Jesus, the body of God, he said, I am the way, the truth, the life. I repeat again, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life no one comes unto the father but by me you see jesus didn't say i am a way to god he said i'm the way to god he didn't say oh you see so many people say oh there are many ways to get to heaven there are many ways to get to god false jesus said i am the way the way the only way he then proceeds to say i am the truth the truth he's not a truth so many people say, oh, everyone can have their own truth. There's multiple truths. False. Jesus said, I am the truth, which means there is no truth outside of Jesus. There is no truth outside of God. There's no truth outside of the word of God. Anything else outside of that is deception at its finest. So you see, that's why when you step into Christ, you step into truth and reality. Reality, not deception, not what you like, but what is reality. And then Jesus said, it saying, I am the life. I am the life, you see? He's talking about, he's not a good life that he can give you. No, he gives you life itself. Life itself. This life, this eternal life. So many people live with this impending doom in their hearts, knowing that one day they're going to die. One day they're going to perish and they're going to disappear from existence forever. False. No. When you die, you don't disappear from existence. You either go to hell or heaven for eternity. And that's fact. So what you need is this thing called everlasting life, eternal life with God in fellowship. And Jesus said, I am the life. You see, you get this life, this everlasting life, this eternal life, this imperishable life when you step into Christ, when you accept him as your Lord and Savior. So all you need is found in Christ. There's nothing outside of Christ that you need. Life is in Christ. Joy is in Christ. Peace is in Christ. Love is in Christ. All you need is your relationship with God. And you get that when you step into Christ. You see? But so many people refuse to do that. Going back to the subject, we're talking about love versus ego. You see, ego is this pride. So many people allow pride to... So many people allow for pride to interfere with them stepping into Christ. You see, pride. I hope you can hear me, by the way. 
pride. You see, so many people saying, no, I don't want to be, let Jesus be Lord of my life. Why? Because I want to be Lord of my life. I want to be God of my life, of my decisions. Why would I submit myself from, before God, you see? So they're prideful. So they'll go to hell with their pride. The Bible says that before destruction comes a haughty spirit, before destruction comes pride, you see? So if you want, if you want destruction, continue being prideful, that's fine. But the Bible says that the humble shall be exalted. The humble, the humble, the humble. You see? So when you accept the Lord, uh, Jesus as Lord of your life, and you step into Christ by believing Him and confessing Him, you step into humility because you have humbled yourself. You have submitted yourself before God. You've removed the ego part. That ego part of you is now dead and gone. Do you see? Love versus ego. I'm going to wrap up with this. Love versus ego. Love versus ego. You see, love is God. Because God is love and there's no love outside of God. So if you want love, go for a relationship with God. If you don't have that relationship with God through Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, you don't have love. You have deception. So love is God. Step into Christ and get that love. Versus ego. What is ego? Ego is that thing that is keeping you away from that relationship with God. That pride, which you have the choice and the power to refuse. You can say, I refuse to be prideful. I refuse to be prideful. I choose to submit myself unto God to take this step of faith and to do it. Excuse the background noise, please, for a second. Thank you so much. So this is me. Thank you so much for listening and for the opportunity to be able to share so freely. I love it. Thank you so much, Lauren. I'll hand you over from now. You're welcome, sweetheart. Um, I'm just, um, you know, that I, I basically have my own beliefs and everyone is entitled to their own beliefs. But today I wanted to bring you on with your beliefs and your values because you have a right to say what you feel as well. And because you've got such a positive way of getting through life, I just think it's really, really beautiful to be able to do that. And as long as we are able to respect each other, all humans, star seeds, whatever, as long as we respect each other and we don't hurt each other, then that's the answer to coexistence and how to have a good life. And so moving on TV is all about freedom. So it's been beautiful seeing you and hopefully we'll bring you back again next week and you can do another one because to me, I, I, I love looking at the ego and love. And, and I love what you said about special relationships. Now, don't get me wrong. I, as you know, I broke up my marriage after 26 years because I felt that I had to be on my own and to get strong in order to be with the person that I decided I wanted to be with. So I don't, you know, my parents stayed together. And they had a terrible marriage <laughs> and it was like, you know, I wish they'd broken up. So it to me, it's an individual thing. But I agree with you that love is unconditional. Agape, I call it love, open, open vows, love, ahava in Hebrew, love, it's open. And love has to go out to everything and everyone. And, and we were taught not to attach to anything or anyone because the minute you attach, that's when you're in trouble. That's when you suffer. And love cannot be conditional because then it's not real love. So, so I love what you said there. So thank you so much, Emmanuel. And lots of love. <laughs> Have a beautiful day. And I shall see you back on. And maybe we could also, Vlad wants to interview you and uh, the cast of the film you've made oh, wow. and uh, with the music and everything. Vlad would love to do that on his show. And as I say, we're going to put something separate things on Patreon 
for so people can actually see it um, as special viewers that contribute to moving on TV. Because mm. thanks to them, I'm interviewing a new presenter. So wish me luck. I've got an interview at five o'clock with a new presenter and he wants to do his own show. He's really excited about it. And thanks to the Patreons, I will be able to actually give him some money, which is incredible. Thanks to you guys supporting Moving On TV. So lots of love, Manuel. Have a beautiful day and thank you so much for coming on. Take care, sweetheart. See you soon. Yeah, keep, keep the 9th of August as a free day that's my birthday so um i have to think about what we're going to do for my birthday i would love we we'll do a special birthday celebration here on moving on tv for me hey. <laughs> 9th of august it's oh god it's getting here it's getting there but that is if we're still able to get to each other god knows no one knows we'll get to each other somehow yeah. <laughs> we will okay lots of love emmanuel take Thank care sweetheart have a beautiful day. Thank you. Bye. Bye, sweetheart. So that was Emmanuel Trangos and Love versus Ego. And again, you've got to remember what I put on this. This is Emmanuel's beliefs, and we're all entitled to our beliefs. I don't carry the same beliefs as Emmanuel, but he is so positive and I do carry the same beliefs when it comes to his concept of what love is and what love isn't love is unconditional and you know it's our job to forgive it's my job to forgive 